how do we balance the material and the spiritual life? How do we align the spiritual world and the material world? Luckily, they're not, they're not actually separate. It has to do with how we think. So it's not that there is a material world and there is a spiritual world. There just is the divine creation. It is all spiritual, as in spirit runs through it all. The the scriptures, the teachings remind us over and over again in so many different ways that all of the creation is divine. All of the creation is pervaded by divinity. It's given very clearly. So if all of creation is divine, if irrefutably, God's presence is in everything, then it means it's all spiritual. Yes, sure, we have things of matter. It's not that matter doesn't exist, but the existence of matter is never the problem. The existence of a glass of water, the existence of a shawl, the existence of skin and bones and blood or a couch, that's not the problem. That, that doesn't keep me from living a spiritual life. What keeps me from living it, the dilemma comes when I focus on matter instead of spirit. And that's a choice. So fortunately, it's not about we have to balance. It's all one. I'm all, all in favor of oneness and wholeness and integration rather than thinking about this part and this part and that part and if I can just get the parts to balance, I'm all okay. Rather, how can I understand it's all one? It's like my favorite, my favorite story about that of three men who are stranded on a boat in the middle of the ocean and they're stressed naturally, as you could imagine, people would be stranded in the middle of the ocean. And so, of course, they start to fight, as happens when we get stressed. And in order to alleviate, to some extent, their fighting, they decide, well, we're going to just divide this boat into three parts. You know, like kids do in their room. This is your half. This is my half. You know, your, your toe is in my half. Get your toe out of my half. So they do that in the boat, and they divide it into three sections. Each man has his own one-third of the boat, and they're all going on fine for a while, until two of the men notice that a leak has sprung in the third man's part of the boat. And they start screaming and panicking and telling this guy, you know, stop up your leak, do something. We're all going to sink and drown and die. And the third guy says, oh, he says, don't worry, it's only leaking in my part of the boat. <laughs> and I love that story when, whenever we talk about, I mean, it can go in so many different ways, but especially here as we're talking about balance, we, we do that in our lives. We think, well, I'm going to have a career life, and I'm going to have a social life, and then I'm going to have a spiritual life. And okay, I guess if there's a, a leak in it, that's all right, because it's only in this one, one part of the boat, and at least my career life is going to be good, and my social life will be good, and family life will be good, and all right, a little leak in my spiritual side of the boat. But that's not actually how life works, which is why I love the joke, because it's not how boats work either doesn't matter where the leak is. The whole thing's going down. And in the same way in our life, all of those, those lines that we draw between this part of my life, that part of my life, and as though somehow the goal is just, you know, like with a boat, 
not too much weight in the front, not too much weight in the back, not too much weight on the left or right, and it'll stay upright. <coughs> well, it'll stay upright until there's a leak somewhere. And so instead, if we can think about our life as one, we do things that pertain to matter, so we brush our teeth. It's important to take care of them. We bathe our bodies, we feed our bodies, we clothe our bodies, we buy things with which to clothe our bodies or we knit them ourselves or whatever it may be, but nonetheless we are engaged with matter, the matter of our body, the matter of the clothes that go on them, the food that goes through it. But throughout that, how can I keep my awareness and my focus on spirit? And that, that becomes the goal. Is not, okay, I do all of these things pertaining to matter, and then I've got 30 minutes or 60 minutes or 120 minutes or whatever it is a day of my spiritual time. The problem with that becomes that as you do more and more of your spiritual time, you get more and more of the juice from that. I mean, that's really, you know, in, in, in Hindi we say das. it's us. It's, it's more than juice, it's, it's essence. It's divine juice. And so obviously we want to do that more and more and more and forget it, I'm just going to meditate because it feels really good. But that's not actually what we were put here on earth to do, is just sit in a corner and meditate for 24 hours a day. We have to figure out, it may work for a few days, a week, have a retreat, no problem, but ultimately the point is get off your cushion, get off your mat, go into the world, fulfill your dharma, yeah, and come back to the mat and the cushion for a short period of time every day, recharge your batteries. But you need to carry that which you experience on the mat, on the cushion, into the world. Otherwise, all you're doing in the rest of the world is waiting till you can get back on the mat and the cushion. Everything else starts to feel like drudgery. And that's not the way to live. So the goal becomes, how can I make whatever I do spiritual? So if in my spiritual time, let's say I am connecting with God in the form of Krishna, let's say. Well, how can I, as I move through the world, see Krishna everywhere? If in my spiritual time I'm connecting with God in a, in a nameless, formless way of just connecting with a, a divine spirit, well, how can I experience that divine spirit wherever I go, in the work that I do, regardless of what it is, in the people with whom I work, in the people for whom I work, in the people who work for me. How can I make whatever I do spiritual? And that's, that all has to do with my focus. So being spiritual is not about rushing out of the office to go sit home and meditate. Because even if you can get out at 4.58 instead of 5.02, it's only an extra four minutes. Even you skip out at 4.30, okay, the boss won't notice. It's still only an extra 30 minutes. That's not what life is supposed to be. It's not about accumulating minutes that I can spend spiritually. It's about being spiritual, living spiritual, 24 hours a day. And so it's all about my focus. If I'm moving through the world, looking at people as objects, and that becomes my perspective, all right, I've now focused on matter. Look at myself in a material way. God, you look horrible today. You know, your hair, nothing is happening right with your hair, and you've gained weight, and these clothes are horrible. And, you know, I'm looking at myself through matter, as matter. 
move through the world. I'm looking at others like that. Oh, he's hot. God, she's beautiful. Why can't I look like that? I sh that's what I should be wearing today. God, did he forget to brush his hair? Who does he think he is dressed like that? How did his mother let him out of the house? I mean, what, whatever, whatever we may be thinking, whatever perspective we're thinking it from, it's all about matter and material. Instead of that, and it's not that that's bad, it's just that you can only be focused in one direction at one time. I cannot simultaneously be moving north and south at the same time. So I cannot simultaneously be focused on spirit and matter at the same time. So how can I focus on spirit instead? In the form of those I meet along the way. Can I see them as spirit? In the menial tasks I'm doing, okay, I may not necessarily see spirit in my computer or in envelopes I'm stuffing or in the gas I'm pumping. But can I connect to the spirit in me who is pumping the gas, who is stuffing the envelopes, who is doing data entry or balancing accounts in a computer? Can I connect to my spirit as I'm doing it? And if I can do that, then whatever I'm doing becomes spiritual. And so it's not about one hour over here and 23 hours over here or 90 minutes here and 22 and a half hours over here. Because then life just becomes total struggle. You're always looking more time. But then of course Maya comes in and you're late at the office and the kids have a school play and the car got a flat tire on the way home and oh my God, I'm not going to have time to meditate. Well, can't I turn sitting in my car waiting for AAA into a moment of meditation? <clears throat> Can't I turn being at the school play, watching 50 fourth graders do their rendition of Shakespeare into meditation? Because in meditation it's all about connecting with God, with the divine, with spirit, with soul, mine, yours, the universes. So who is to say that I can't do it? Watching 10-year-olds put on Romeo and Juliet, or I can't do it waiting for my tire to be changed, or I can't do it stuffing envelopes or balancing accounts. Of course I can. God is everywhere. Spirit is everywhere. My mind is with me wherever I go. So the tool that I use is always there. So that becomes the way to do it. And yes, by all means, have your battery charging time. Whatever it may be. But don't, don't spend the rest of your day waiting to get back there. Because then you're missing out on all the other hours and all the other opportunities that you have. Instead, ask yourself, how can I make this moment, how can waiting for the bus that's not on schedule, how can that be my meditation time? And that makes not only life more exciting, but it makes our whole spiritual practice more exciting. Because we have the opportunity to really challenge ourselves. It's quite easy to feel a sense of peace sitting in a dark room with a candle lit by yourself, maybe with some nice month that is going on. It's not a shoe in because we still have the mind, of course, and the mind plays all sorts of games, but it's, it's not super difficult to feel peaceful in that moment, to feel a sense of connection in that moment. Challenge yourself. Can you feel it at the bus stop? Can you feel it at work? Can you feel it doing the dishes, doing the laundry? Because that, that is what life is about. So take what you have there and then challenge yourself. 
How can I feel that waiting at the bus stop? How can I feel that changing my tire because AAA never showed up? How can I feel that in all of these aspects of my life? And again, it's not easy. But we've got our whole lives to do it. Now, instead of half an hour a day, you've got 24 hours a day. Every moment becomes an opportunity. 